Hello everyone! In today's video, I'm going to be going over something that I believe that everyone experiences, and that is feeling down and out about your art and how best to approach it in a way to improve instead of just being mean to yourself. Now, I've shown you a couple of things, a couple of pieces I've done the last couple of days, and these past few weeks, I haven't really been all that pleased with my artwork. Now, we all go through the phase where we're like, this is poop. Why am I doing this? Am I even good? Blah, 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 blah. Mean, mean, mean. Nasty, nasty, nasty things we shouldn't say to ourselves. We are our own worst critic. Now, instead of saying, oh, let's just brush it off or just work through it, I want to tell you that you need to try and step back and approach it from a logical standpoint. This doesn't mean okay, don't feel what you're feeling. Let yourself feel the little bit of frustration. I mean, we're human, I assume. We're human and we're gonna feel that way. However, instead of allowing myself to feel down and out, instead of going over everything that I didn't like and saying, you know what? Oh God, I hate all of it. Chances are you don't really hate all of it. Chances are there are just things about it that you don't like, but you do need to give yourself credit where it is due. So first off, start by realizing you're doing art, so you're practicing. Psh, step one completed. Practicing is the first step to getting better. The second thing that I wanted to do was say, okay, so what don't I like about these pieces? It's the line art that's bothering me. Okay, I have that addressed. What I realized after experimenting a few times, now you'll notice I showed you three, but basically the entire beginning of my sketchbook was really bothering me. And it took me a long time to get there and figure it out. I will say you do need to bear through it, but maybe like just art and not worry about what it is you are drawing or painting or however it is you go about it, because eventually, Maybe some of us need to not think so much about it and then it'll hit us like one of those kind of things. Or maybe you just need to step back and hit it logically. But one of the things that were bothering me was the line art. Okay, what about the line art didn't I like? I didn't really like whenever my lines would taper off into something big. I thought it looked, I don't know, not so much that it has to look neat, but it has to, I just, I don't know how to explain it. I didn't care for my big lines that looks less controlled in comparison to my smaller lines. Not just to say I only cared for my little detailed lines and I didn't like the texture or whatnot I was getting with the bigger ones or my tapering effect, but I just realized, you know what? After I made that Batman thing, what I did like was the little lines. And on my other pieces that were bothering me, I did like the little lines. So I did for Batman Day that little Batman piece as an experiment and even still, and I did it on this um, portrait of a dog for my friend's birthday, I even still was doing some of the bad habits that I didn't like. So when you find something that you're not caring for, particularly about your style or how you're approaching your art, take it one step at a time. Don't just find all of your flaws and go, oh, I hate this and I hate this and I hate this and try and fix it all at once. I mean, chances are we've been conditioning ourselves for quite some time. You're practicing and you're drawing and you're conditioning yourself to draw a certain way. So just like you're practicing over and over again to learn and train yourself to draw a certain way, in order to fix the things that are bothering you, you're gonna have to go over it again and again. So as I've said many a times, the best approach for me when it comes to using the pen tool is to take my time. And now I've learned that smaller strokes, but a bunch of smaller strokes, pending on the piece, make me a whole lot happier, especially where the fur is concerned. But this can apply to anything that you're doing or anything that you're working on. Instead of deconstructing yourself in a negative manner in which you're like, oh, this stinks, oh, nothing's right. Just step back a little bit, say, okay, what is it about my piece that's making me not happy? But also, what about your piece 
does make you happy. Are you doing the colors right? Are you maybe not happy with your proportions? Are you not happy with how you're drawing eyes? I'm not happy with how I'm drawing eyes. Like when I see my pieces, I can see everything that I don't like about it and everything that's wrong. But as I said, one step at a time. First I'm tackling my line art, then I'm gonna tackle the style in which I draw my eyes. And I just suggest that you do it for yourself next time that you're feeling down and out. Tori uh, Juicy Ink or Tori Ann Zero Zero, as <laughs> some of you may know her, said something very, very wise to me the other day when I was telling her that I was feeling a little down and out about my art and I didn't really have like a good explanation for it. I was just feeling kind of meh. But she said that that was a good thing because it meant that I was growing. And wise as she is, she is incredibly correct. If you are at a point and you're second guessing your art or you're feeling as though, you know, something's bothering you, it means you're getting ready to level up, my friends. It means that you are just conscious conscientious of yet one more thing that you want to improve on and if we didn't think like this it's kind of the artist curse if we didn't think like this then we wouldn't be improving and you know if you don't want to improve that's that's your bag i mean I'm, <laughs> no one can and cannot tell you how to do your art it's yours i personally always think that there's room for me to improve and i always want to be better and be the best that i could possibly be at this thing that makes me the happiest so try and take those feelings and turn them into positive ones. Accept your flaws, accept what you like about your in quotation art flaws because it's more than likely part of your style and then sit down with yourself and say, what can I do to improve this? How can I approach this another way? Maybe I need to try it this way. I mean, experiment, draw things that you don't care about, that you're not too concerned with, things that aren't too important with you. Maybe draw something like I drew this, com not commission, this was a gift for somebody's birthday. And it was very important, but the personal attachment was gone. It was more so that I wanted it to come out and be a good piece. So of course I also took my time with it. But maybe, you know, you need to change the circumstance of how you're approaching your art so you can see something that you normally wouldn't look at. There's a million ways you can explore it. All that I ask is that you please be sweet to yourself, give yourself a chance, and try and approach it calmly and logically, you know, because you're only a human, as I said, I'm guessing, and you are just getting ready to grow. You're gonna metamorphosize in your lovely little artist cocoon and you're gonna come out a beautiful, awesome unicorn butterfly. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to take the time and make this a little video for you guys because um, I've been feeling like this and I know that everyone else feels like this too. So I figured I would bring it up and you know, share my own artistic journey with you and hopefully that it helps somebody and it brings you some bit of encouragement. Please, please, please be sweet to yourself. Don't ever stop. Keep trekking through. Be logical with yourself and remember to enjoy the journey. You know, everybody starts somewhere. I hope you guys have an amazing day. You have an amazing week and go create something. If you'd like to know what I used in this piece, check the description and I will leave a list of all of the materials included. Thanks!